press record. So my name is Vera and I'm a meditation teacher. I'm also a yoga teacher. I'm a two-time cancer survivor. And I've also been in recovery for about, I'm gonna mute everybody. I've been in recovery uh, from addiction for, for a while now, 18 years to be exact. And so how has meditation helped me in my life? Oh my goodness, so many ways. And I'm sure for a lot of you who've been practicing, you know the power of meditation. Um, but tonight I wanna to get a little bit more specific and do more visualizations. So I'm gonna say a few words about visualizations. And basically it's a simple technique that you use to create a strong mental image of a future event. And so by visualizing, for instance, success, you can build self-confidence and you can perform well. So it's been used in, uh, to stimulate a lot of, uh, for sports, that has been a way that people have manifested what the reality of their winning the sports event or Maybe if they have a lecture or some sort of big event happening and they're nervous about it, they visualize themselves being really successful at the event. Or for instance, um, I, I have some examples here regarding uh, goal setting. So if you have a specific goal, sales goal, a lot of people who work in sales tend to visualize and do visualizations. So visualization is imagining what you want to achieve in the future you're visualizing. Some people like to have vision boards. We're not creating a vision board tonight. That wasn't what we signed up for. <laughs> but I want you to create a visual vision board. Hi, Sally. I want you to create a vision board in your mind as if it were true today. And it involves using all five senses. So sight, smell, touch, taste, and hearing. The process of visualization directs your subconscious, subconscious, so it's a lot going on in your brain, to be aware of the end goal that you have in mind. It reminds you on a constant basis, and it trains your brain to respond as if the outcome were true in the present moment. So there's two types of visualizations. There's outcome visualization. That involves envisioning the desired future endpoint and process visualization envisioning every step toward that desired outcome with all the senses engaged. And we're going to do a couple of those tonight. We're actually going to do those tonight. And I really hope you can continue practicing this, uh, this month ahead and visualize what you want to manifest. And you were going to tell me next month, Vera, it happened. What I was visualizing, I manifested, right? I'm going to give you after the class links to information um, uh, of studies that show the the benefits of visualization. I'm just going to tell you one though. There was a study at brain looking at brain patterns of weightlifters found that patterns activated when a weightlifter lifted hundreds of pounds were similar, similarly activated when they only imagined lifting. That is wild that it had the same basis in the body. So um, doesn't mean you're just going to sit there and dream about doing uh, crunches and have a six pack. That's not what I'm saying, but it can help manifest experiences in the body that can be more beneficial, perhaps when you actually do start doing the crunches, right? Um, so now I want, let's see, there's some other examples here. Um, one form of mental re rehearsal visualization has been popular since the Soviets started using it back in 1970s to compete in sports. Now many athletes employ the techniques, including Tiger Woods and world champion golfers. And this uh, one guy, his, his name is Jack Nickus, said, I never hit a shot, not even in practice without having a very sharp in focus picture in my head. Even Muhammad Ali also used different uh, mental practices to enhance his performance. Affirmation, visualization, mental rehearsal, self-confidence, and perhaps the most powerful is um, uh, his own utterance of himself that he was the greatest. He really felt he was the greatest, right? He, he, he's probably not necessarily the greatest, but he felt he was the greatest. And so when he went into the ring, 
he became the greatest, right? So that is the, pa the power of visualization. So today, tonight, we, I want you to have a very established, specific goal in mind. It's going to be different for everybody. And you might want to write it down on a piece of paper right now. Okay. And so we're going to focus on that goal tonight. All right. So we're going to close our eyes. So get comfortable. Now that I've talked your ear off, I hope, I hope we're, you're still here with me. <laughs> and I want you to take a big breath in and a big breath out. And I want you to relax. You've had a busy day. You've been running around. You've had a lot of conversations. You've had work. You've dealt with your, perhaps your spouse, your partner, your children, whatever it is. You've had work experiences. Perhaps you had to deal with a family member, parents, whatever. You've had a busy day. You woke up. You had your breakfast, your lunch. Maybe you didn't have lunch. Maybe you didn't have breakfast. You had a, you know, normal day here. But now we're going into a different realm, right? We're going into the future. We're going into manifestation, which is a very powerful spiritual experience. So we want to make sure our bodies are ready for that. So I want your body to be really relaxed. So if there's something, there's a place in your body that you're holding on to some sort of tension or something that's stopping you from being completely relaxed, I want you to focus on that area and bring some breath into it. So perhaps you have tense shoulders. So I want you to lift your shoulders, just lift them up right now and then relax them, just drop them right down. Then I want you to take your hands because we tend to clench our hands. So clench your hands, create a really tight fist and then let it go. And then I want you to scrunch your face just like so, and then let it go. And then I want you to move your jaw because we tend to hold, we tend to hold tension in the jaw. So just massage the jaw just like this. And then roll the shoulders back and roll the shoulders forward. And if your legs are on the floor, lift your legs, lift your feet, and then lower your feet down. Sit up nice and tall, fill your sit bones into the chair, and take a big breath in. Feel your belly button fill up, your belly fill up, and then exhale, release all the air. And I want you to visualize, this is our first visualization, just this is just a simple visualization. See a light of energy, a beautiful light of energy coming up from the bottoms of your feet. And every time it touches a different body part, let that body part relax. So from the bottoms of your feet to your ankles, from your ankles to your calves, to your kneecaps, to your thighs, going up to the base of your spine. So right there at the root chakra, relaxing your pelvis all the way up to your belly button, relaxing your belly button to your torso and to your shoulders, relaxing your shoulder, that light of energy goes into your arms, to your elbows, to your arm, to your wrist, to your fingers, to your thumb, your pointer, your middle, your ring and your pinky finger, all the way back up to your shoulders, to your throat, to the throat chakra, to the mouth, to the jaw, to the teeth, to the eyes, to the eye sockets, to the eyebrows, the nose, nostrils, back of the ears, back of the head, all the way to the third eye. I want you that light of energy to land at the third eye. Really keep your, those eyes closed here. Turn off all distractions. You are here right now in this moment. Visualize that third eye. That is a very powerful center for you. That's why in a lot of Eastern religions, you see that the deities or the figures, they have third eyes because that is their place of clairvoyance. That is their place of insight and awareness. I want you to see that third eye right now. And then that light of energy comes all the way up to the top of your head. That is what connects you to your higher power, your higher purpose, your higher calling. So this is the foundation of the visualization. 
And we're going to start by focusing on a goal. And it doesn't have to be a big goal. We're not talking about trying to save the planet here. <laughs> it could be, I just, you know, whatever it is for you. I, I want to clean my house. I want to clean my closet. It, it doesn't have to be these big things, right? So I just want you to set that goal right now. Okay, set that goal. I'll give you an example, but keep your eyes closed. I, I applied for my, a PhD about three months ago in December. And I really, really wanted to work with a professor. And I visualized myself working this, with this professor and doing a PhD, or, you know, making that happen. So I applied and, you know, as it turned out, she wasn't taking any students. She just, she's 75, she just didn't want to take any students. But I still saw myself working with her. I did. I saw, I, I visualized it. I, in my meditation, I even, I could taste it. I could feel it. And as it turns out, we had a mutual friend and we were connected. And the mutual friend said, you've got to meet Vera. She's great. She's, she's, she's wonderful. She knows a lot about social media and she can help you. Anyway, as it turns out, I ended up, uh, she invited me to work in her lab or to be part of her lab at Harvard. It's uh, the mindfulness lab at Harvard. It, her, her name is Dr. Ellen Langer. You should look her up. She's pretty famous for the field of mindfulness. And she invited me to, to do research in her lab. And from there, I, I visualized and I said, I, I just see more. I see more than this. And I, see, I, I, I see us working on projects together. I see us creating videos together. And um, last week I said, can we do this video together? I want to make videos with you. And she said, yes. And last week we did it. And it was very successful. It's very popular, got shared a lot. And that's all because of visualization. I'm just, I'm just saying this to you. This came out of nowhere. I read her book and I was like, I need to work with this woman. She's at Harvard. I live near Harvard. That's all. That's all that happened, guys. And then now I'm making videos with her. Okay. So, so that's, that's a little inspirational story. And I'm sure that you will have an inspirational story too of your visualization. And I cannot wait to hear what that is. So that being said, set that intention, that visualization right now. And whatever it is, I want you to see yourself in that moment and see yourself engaging. Look around you, right? So you're, you're setting that goal for yourself. I want you to see the environment that you're in, see the room that you're in. What, what is the room? What, do, what are the colors of the wall? The more specific you can get about your visualization, the more that the universe will respond to the specificity. Specific. Can I say that word? So if your goal is to make a lot of money, right? And maybe you walk up to an ATM and you take your card out, your ATM card, and you swipe and you can look at the numbers on the ATM and see the numbers there. And what does the room look like that the ATM is in? That's the spe specificity that I'm talking about. So see yourself in that environment, see yourself in that place. And what are you saying? What are you doing? Are you talking? Are you listening? Are you walking? Are you moving? What are you doing? If you want a promotion, a job promotion, what is that? What does that look like? Do you have a new desk? Do you have, do you have more money, right? You want a new house. What does that house look like? These are all things that we can get specific about. Maybe you don't want a new job. Maybe you want more time off, right? So where are you? Where are you going? Where, what's your vac, do you have a vacation in mind? Where is that place? I would say 90% of the vacations I have start off in my brain. And then they are manifested. They are manifested into reality. So what is that, is that place that you're going to be? So I want you to really see that in your mind's eye. Imagine a future and already see yourself as achieving your goal. That is the, that is the power, right? So these, these people who were visualizing themselves 
uh, playing golf or like Tiger Woods or Muhammad Ali and all these sports stars, they saw themselves achieving the goal. So what, how have you already achieved your goal? Hold a mental picture of it as if it were occurring to you right at that moment. Imagine the scene as in much detail as possible. And of course, engage as many of the five senses as you can in your visualization. Who are you with? Which emotions are you feeling right now? That's a great one. Are you feeling excited? Are you feeling nervous, scared, joyful, exuberant, elated? How are you feeling? What are you wearing? What's your outfit look like? Do you look fabulous? Are you in a new outfit? Do you have something that you're wearing from your closet already? Did you buy, go out and buy a new outfit? If you got that job promotion, are you wearing like a new power suit? <laughs> or maybe it's jeans Friday and you're wearing your jeans. Or maybe you're like, Vera, I am not, I am not at work. I am on a hammock. Yes, show me that hammock. And are you wearing a flower shirt with, you know, some flip flops? So see yourself there, see yourself in that moment. What are you wearing? Is there a smell in the air? Is there some sort of smell? If you're, if you're in that hammock, do you smell the ocean? You know, you can smell the ocean. If you got that job promotion, if you're in that place with the ATM, do you smell that, that beautiful smell of the ATM? Or the, <laughs> I'm just kidding, the, uh, the sterile smell of an ATM room. Hey, you know, it's a place, it's a place. What do you hear? Do you hear the sounds of the ocean? Do you hear, do you got a job promotion? What do you, what do you hear in that moment, in that room? If you have a new house, what, what kind of noises do you hear here? If you, if you want a house that is more out, is outside, if you want to do more camping, you know, what, what do you want to hear? And what is your environment like? Look around you. What can you see? What is the environment? I mean, these are, I mean, I know it's not easy. These are tangible things I'm asking you for a visualization, but it's really for, for you to stretch, to stretch, to stretch, to stretch. Cause after this, I'm not going to see you guys for a month, but I want you to hold on to those visualizations. Cause I really do believe that you can manifest this so powerful, just as powerful as doing the real thing. Research shows that guys research shows that. So continue to observe the moment of this visualization. And I really want you to eliminate any doubts. That's really important. So when there's like a big doubt bubble that comes in and just see a doubt bubble, like it's just make it look ugly, like a doubt bubble, like make it look unhealthy, unhealthy doubt bubble. And it's just like, no, I don't, I don't need you doubt bubble. Like you don't need to come into my world. You can just, you know, take a little needle and pop the doubt bu bubble. <laughs> just take a little needle and just go, boop, just pop the doubt bubble when they come up to you. And repeat this practice, obviously, combined with meditation affirmation. I am courageous. I am strong. Or to... Borrow from Muhammad Ali, I am the greatest. I am courageous, I am strong, I am the greatest. I am strong, I am courageous. Seeing yourself in those moments. And then open up your eyes and look around you and look around the room that you're in right now. Some of you might have gone really deep. And so just notice where you are again in this moment. And write down what that visualization was. You don't have to write it down in the chat, but just write it down, please, somewhere in your, I want you to see it. I want you to have it. If you're in your office, put it on a post-it note and stick it on the wall. Because again, that is another form of activation of having the written words there, whatever it is. I would love to know what everyone's is maybe after, but right now just stick it somewhere, stick it somewhere, right? 
what you see every day, you will manifest, right? You will see it having positive quotes, having that affirmation, you will manifest it. You will manifest it. You will manifest it. You will manifest it. Okay. So now we're going to, we're going to continue with, we're going to continue. We're going to do it again because repetition is so important here. And there's a lot of stuff online. There's a lot of stuff online that I have pulled from that I will share with you guys after the class. But this is the eight visualization techniques to reach your dreams. And this is by Jack Canfield. He's a very famous in the meditation world, mindfulness world. He's He's up there with John Kabat-Zinn and Alan Langer. Um, so I have found his manifest your dreams technique and there is eight visualization techniques to reach your dreams. So are you guys ready to reach your dreams? It's a lot to promise, but we're going to do it. Okay. So close your eyes. Take a big breath in, big breath out. Just notice what's coming up for you. If you're having any doubts, like, in your mind again take that doubt that doubt bubble that that i'm sorry take the pin and then poke the doubt bubble when it starts to pop up you don't have time for doubts we don't have time for that inhale hold and then exhale inhale hold and exhale one more inhale hold and exhale inhale hold and exhale So the following visualization techniques allow us to create our own visualization practice and to move much closer to achieving our goals. So with your eyes closed and feeling grounded, feeling relaxed, feeling in the moment, know what you want. Your first step is to pick one specific dream or goal you want to focus on and get really clear about what it is and why you want to achieve it. The more clearly you can define this dream or goal, the easier it will be for you to visualize yourself achieving it. So I'm going to give you a few breaths here to get very clear about the dream or goal that you want to achieve. Inhaling, exhale. And if you're struggling trying to figure it out, I'm gonna, we're, we're gonna take a few more breaths here. It, again, it does not have to be a big one. You don't have to save the planet. Just think of something simple for yourself. Even if it's like, I want to take the stairs at work. Great. That is a goal, <laughs> right? So just simply, I want to spend more time with my mom. I mean, I want to be nicer to my mom. How about that? Anybody got that one? Yeah, that's fine. I'm not always so patient with my mom. I want more patience. So that, that's a simple, simple goal, simple dream. Okay. Second one, second, second strategy here, the mental rehearsal technique. Imagine you're in a movie theater. So the lights are dimming and the movie starts. And it's a movie of you doing perfectly whatever it is that you want to do better. And by the way, this is, this is what a lot of athletes have used in the past. 
So it's a different type of visualization than, than, than maybe what you've been exposed to in the past, but it's a very effective one. So again, the lights are dimming and the movie starts playing and that's you doing what you want to do better. Visualize what's happening on the screen in as much detail as possible, including your clothing, the expression on your face, your environment, and any other people that might be around. Add in any sounds you would be hearing. So traffic, music, or people talking, clapping. Finally, recreate in your body any feelings you think that you'd be experiencing as you engage in this activity. So you are the star of your own show here. And I want you to see yourself doing something better whatever it is that you want to do. It could be simple, it's like, oh, I just want to be able to balance better. When I'm doing a tree pose and yoga, I know some, some of you are doing yoga as well, you have you've done yoga with me. But what can you do better? And so remember, you were sitting in the chair visually looking at this screen. Okay, now you're going to do something different. And by the way, this is all just visualization. You're not actually doing this. You're just, you're not actually doing this physically right now, but you're mentally doing it, right? So step two is to get out of your chair, not actually get out of your chair, but in the visualization, get out of your chair and walk up to the movie screen. Open a door in the screen and walk through it into the actual movie. Now experience the entire scene again from inside of yourself, looking at it through your own eyes. This is called an embodied image rather than a distant image and will deepen the impact of the experience. Again, see here, everything in vivid detail. So this is a very big distinction in visualization. So there's one, one where you're seeing yourself on the screen, another one where you're getting up and you're opening up the door and you are in the moment. Step three. Walk back out of the screen and return to your seat in the theater. Then reach out and grab the screen where the movie of your life is still playing and shrink it down to the size of a cracker. Now eat it. Pop it in, pop that tiny screen in your mouth and chew it up and swallow it. Imagine that each tiny piece contains the full picture of you performing well, just like the hologram. Visualize all these little screens traveling down in your stomach and out through the bloodstream into every cell of your body. Then imagine that every cell of your body is lit up with the movie of you performing perfectly. So that is, that's honestly, guys, very different than anything I've ever done. This is, again, this is from Jack Canfield, very powerful uh, person in this in the in in the field of meditation and mindfulness. So, a couple different ways of visualization here. The three part series here of watching the movie, doing something better, coming up right up to it and then taking it back with you and it shrinks down to a piece of a cracker and then eating it so it goes into your bloodstream. And open your eyes. So generally that would take five minutes and I am, I'm actually going to just put, um, I will put that in the, in the chat. 
um, after class because some of you might want to practice that. And some of you might say that was not the type of visualization I prefer. And that's okay because that's why we're trying different types of visualization. Not, it's not an all, all one fits all model. Um, and so we're going to finish up with talking about the subconscious mind and creating triggers for your subconscious mind. Our subconscious, because this is all for a subconscious mind. Our subconscious minds have evolved many, evolved to become incredibly good at connecting sensations and experiences. That's why a certain smell can immediately evoke a powerful memory or surge of associated emotions. So to create positive triggers for your own subconscious, expose yourself to a specific kind of sensory input as you do your visualization exercises, for example, you might want to listen to a specific song or use aromatherapy to connect a specific scent to the visualization of your desired outcome. You guys know I work in aromatherapy. I'm a big fan of that. That's a good idea. Okay. Then make sure you're exposed to that center song at least once a day so that your visualizations can spring clearly to mind. So if you have a song that can connect you with that manifestation, try to listen to it, try to evoke that. If I have the scent, right, can rub my hands together, inhale. So it connects to that subconscious that I want to trigger. And then finally, this is one visualization technique that is wonderful because the more intensely we're able to visualize as complete, uh, the more we can hardwire our brains to resolve the conflict between the vision we hold in our head and the knowledge that the reality doesn't exist. So the first one, which I, I think is so important, is living in the moment. So we're going to focus on ending our our practice with a visualization of being in the moment and feeling our body and and being grounded in the moment so keeping your eyes closed inhale and exhale inhale And exhale. Inhale. Exhale. The more relaxed you are, the more that you are going to be here right now and observe any thoughts anything that comes up like a bubble again and see yourself popping the bubble with the the visualization of the the needle popping the bubble so a worry comes up pop and anxiety comes up pop impatience comes up pop a doubt comes up, pop. Just keep popping it until you're left with just your breath. So it's recommended that after you set a goal or intention or this manifestation of a better performance, whatever you want, your vision, your dreams, your desires, the recommendation as you end that, you wrap it up with being in the present moment because that is going to enhance the continued visualization. You cannot stay in visualization all day long. That is not going to be very healthy for you in the long run. 
It's having the balance of being mindfully present and also being able to turn on that visualization when you need it. So we're making the distinction here. And I want you guys to continue to practice that. So whatever call to you tonight, if visualization does not call to you, that's okay. You can still practice being in the present moment. But I highly recommend visualization because it is extremely effective and it's a practice like anything else. If your brain had trouble wrapping it's it had trouble wrapping yourself around the conception of your dreams and visualizing, continue to practice it because it will get clearer and clearer for you. And know that it's it's so effective for your subconscious to to create the reality. So now we have to come back to the reality, right? The moment, the breath. So thinking, I mean, allowing the thoughts to just flow. If you're having any thoughts, just let them flow like water out. And then instead, focus on bodily sensations. Notice how your shoulders are feeling, how your abdomen. It's impossible to focus on your physical body and be mentally in the past or the future at the same time. So notice again your feet and maybe wiggle your feet and your calves and your kneecaps, your thighs, your pelvis. Notice your sit bones onto the to the onto the chair, your abdomen, your chest, your shoulders, your throat. Your, your eyes, your eyebrows, your ears, the third eye in between your eyebrows, your arms. Focus on your left foot, focus on the right foot. Right arm left arm, right cheek, left cheek, nose, mouth, as the saying goes, today is a gift. That's why it's called the present. Today is a gift. That's why it's called the presence. Absolutely do practice regular visualization techniques, but be sure to spend the majority of your day enjoying the gifts of today, of the present. You'll get better outcomes as a result. And inhale, open your eyes. Again, if anything came up for you, writing down your goals, writing down your dreams, writing down your intentions. You can achieve amazing results just by this practice alone. Visualizations and affirmations allow you to change your beliefs assumptions and opinions about the most important person in your life, you. They allow you to harness the 18 billion brain cells in your brain and get them all working into a singular and purposeful direction. What is the, what is there? There's a, there's a statistic like we only use 10% of our brain. So imagine the depths that you can go. And we did, we just skimmed it tonight. We just did a very simple skimming. So I'm going to put some more information because the, again, the more you practice, the more that you're going to deepen this very powerful technique that again has worked with the most successful people and athletes in history. So why, why not, why not do it ourselves? And I apologize if there's a lot tonight that I covered. 
And I think next time we can just go right into the, to just doing visualization without even talking about it, we just do it. But hopefully this opens you up to a different type of meditation. And I've been practicing meditation for, for about 18 years. Honestly, I'm still learning about meditation. I know some of you are really focused on success and financial abundance. Who isn't? Forbes has a great article about visualization. You know when Forbes is writing about it, then something is there, right? <laughs> At least regarding financial abundance. And there's different, there's different techniques, guys. There's not just one technique. The Jack Canfield, there's different, different types. Forbes has different techniques. And then the psychology today is where there's um, actual evidence there in the, uh, according to different studies about the power of visualization. So love to hear if anybody wanted to just in the chat say what their visualization was. I'd love to hear if you're like too shy about it, no worries. But I think I personally think it's pretty interesting as your teacher to know. Um, I'm still developing some of my own visualizations, but this is a great, great, great practice, guys. This is such a great practice. So would love, love to hear your feedback. <laughs> 